हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम वेलकम बैक टू योर फेवरेट एंड इंडिया मोस्ट एफोर्डेबल लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म फिजिक्स वाला सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव कंप्लीटेड सो द थर्मल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ फ्लूड्स सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज थर्मल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैटर सो द लेक्चर नंबर वन ऑफ थर्मल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैटर सो वेर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टेम्परेचर स्केल्स एंड द थर्मल एक्सपेंशन कॉन्सेप्ट सी uh whether you are preparing for neat or je or any other competitive examination so the very very important and easy concept of class 11th division is the heat and thermodynamics part so from here onwards the thermal properties of matter ktg that is kinetic theory of gases and thermodynamics so these are all the very easy chapters so where you can score the questions you, where you can actually score well okay so every student should prepare these concepts and write all the formulas as a short notes and then revise them daily so because if we observe the previous year questions previous year papers so whatever the questions that are picked from these chapters are very easy and they take less time so it's a time saving process for you in the examination right so that's why i recommend every student so should prepare these chapters compulsory okay chalo so as usual i just need your attention for the next one hour guys just be with me avoid all the disturbances around you and at the end of the lecture it's very important to prepare your own short notes chalo so let's get into the today's topic <coughs> so first we'll see the scales of temperature so we have the different scales to measure the temperature so commonly we have the celsius scale and the kelvin scale and the fahrenheit scale so there are two points for each scale so one is called the ice point the other one is called the steam point or which is also called the boiling point so the steam point or which is also called the boiling point okay so understand the concept carefully it's very easy so for a celsius scale so for the celsius scale so the ice point is 0 degree centigrade and the steam point is 100 degree centigrade or the boiling point is 100 degree centigrade so and for the kelvin scale the steam point is 273 kelvin and the ice uh, boiling point is 373 kelvin and for fahrenheit scale so the steam point is 32 fahrenheit and the ice point sorry uh, the steam point is that uh, 212 fahrenheit and the uh, ice point is 32 fahrenheit so here see so in this celsius scale there are 100 divisions 0 to 100 so total this is divided this will be divided into so 100 divisions so whereas so kelvin scale so 273 kelvin to 373 kelvin so this is also the 100 divisions right so in kelvin scale also there are 100 divisions so whereas in the fahrenheit scale so if you observe so this is the upper upper point and this is the lower point so this is 212 minus 312 so which is nothing but again so 180 divisions so this is 180 divisions so these are the three different scales we have so celsius scale and kelvin scale and the fahrenheit scale done everyone understood the basics just these are the different scales you just remember the ice point and the boiling point chal so now see let's go for how do we convert so conversion of temperature from one scale to the another scale so you already know that the kelvin is equals to centigrade plus 273 so the kelvin is equals to centigrade plus 273 273 so for example so if it is 0 degree centigrade means how many kelvin so it's a 273 kelvin s so we already know this so this is the relation between so the kelvin scale and the centigrade scale so we'll solve the questions so you will understand uh, very easily so just uh, follow the procedure first so then we have so the relation between the centigrade scale and the fahrenheit scale so which is c by phi is equals to 
f minus 32 by 9. So, how these relations has come? So, we will see further. So, just as of now, you can just note them down. So, this is this is the relation between the Celsius and Fahrenheit. So, this is the relation between Kelvin and centigrade. Okay. So, the uh, Celsius scale has 100 divisions, whereas the Kelvin scale has 100 divisions and the Fahrenheit scale has 180 divisions. Done. Shall. So, now see here. So, now how do we uh, establish the relation between these temperature scales? See, I am considering so some temperature C on the Celsius scale is equals to some temperature on the Kelvin scale is equals to so some temperature on the Fahrenheit scale let it be F. Okay, chal. So now so the simple logic that you have to remember, so that is the temperature minus the given temperature minus ice point by the number of divisions. So of all the scales will be equal. So let me write that. So the C, the sum temperature, some random temperature C of and this one 0 ice point by. So there are total how many divisions? 100 divisions for this. So which is equals to. So here some temperature k and the ice point is 273 by so what are the total divisions again 100 yes so then so some temperature fahrenheit f so minus so the ice point 32 degrees fahrenheit by so the number of divisions 180 that's it Shallow. so now so you can observe you can get the relation between now so let's say first take this one the C minus 0 by 100 is equals to K minus 273 by 100. So, here 100, 100 cancel. So, C is equals to K plus 273. So, that is what I wrote previously. So, C is, e sorry. K is equals to, see here. C is equals to K minus 273 here. So, from here, the K is equals to C plus 273. Yes or no? Understood, guys? Chal. So, and one more thing. Uh, let's get the relation between. So, the Celsius and Fahrenheit. Celsius and Fahrenheit. So, how do we write that? So, we have got C minus 0 by 100 is equals to F minus 32 by 180. Right? So, 0, 0 cancel. So, it is C by. So, 2, 5, zar. So, 2, 9, zar. So, C by 5 is equals to f minus 32 by 9 so this is the relation between so the celsius and fahrenheit yes or no so that's what we got we got previously kelvin is equals to c plus 273 and celsius and fahrenheit c by 5 is equals to f minus 32 by 9 so some random temperature minus ice point of that particular scale will by so, the number of divisions in that scale, number of divisions in that scale, so is equals to, so some temperature in other scale minus the ice point of that scale by the number of division. So, you can get the relation between any scales in the universe, so like this, any temperature scales. Okay, so clear? Done guys, everyone? Chalo. So, note this point. Now, so let us go for the question so try to solve this question on your own everyone so the freezing point on a thermometer is marked as 20 degrees and the boiling point as 150 degrees centigrade 150 degrees so a temperature of 60 degrees centigrade on this thermometer will be read as see here so try to understand the given question first so there is some unknown thermo a freezing point on a thermometer is marked as 20 degrees and the boiling point as 150 so there is some unknown scale so there is one unknown scale so whose temperatures are given so that is so 20 degree centigrade is its freezing point or ice point and so 150 degree centigrade is its steam point or boiling point so this is fine 
Now a temperature of 60 degree centigrade on this thermometer will be read as. So on the Celsius scale, so let us take one more Celsius scale because they said 60 degree centigrade on the centigrade scale will be equals to how many degree centigrade on this scale that is what they are saying. So this is a Celsius scale, this is a Celsius scale. So now we have got in the Celsius scale, so let the some temperature 60 degree centigrade so and the freezing point is 0 degree centigrade and the boiling point is 100 degree centigrade. So here what temperature on this scale let it be some x is equal to 60 degree centigrade on the Celsius scale done Chalo. so let us get the relation now. So how can we write so for first the scale for the first scale unknown scale so the freezing point some temperature x and the freezing point 20 by so what are the number of divisions so 150 minus 20 so 130 divisions so which are equals to so for the Celsius scale so temperature 60 minus the ice point 0 by the number of divisions 100 so that is it so now get the x value so here x minus 20 by 130 is equals to 60 by 100 right so here 0 0 cancel 1 more 0 1 more 0 gets cancelled so then I can write here so x minus 20 is equals to 13 into 6 78 so send this 20 to that side so the x is equals to so 98 right so that means x is equals to 98 degrees on this scale will be equals to 60 degrees on the Celsius scale so that is what the concept hope you guys understood now clear done Chha. So now at what temperature does the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit equalize? So see, first, so there are two scales they mentioned. So one is Celsius, the other one is a Fahrenheit. So let us take the Celsius scale. So consider this is a Celsius scale. So for the Celsius scale, we know the freezing point or the ice point as 0 degree centigrade the steep point or the boiling point as 100 degree centigrade fine and then we have got the Fahrenheit scale so the Fahrenheit scale so where so the uh, temperature here 32 degrees the ice point and here 212 yes fine so now let us say some temperature on the Celsius scale is equals to some temperature on the Fahrenheit scale so at what temperature they both equalize so at what temperature they both equalize so now what I am considering is let C is equals to F so they both are equal at what temperature they both are equal they are saying so then let it be equals to X some value X so now apply the same concept here so the temperature C minus so the freezing point 0 by the number of divisions on the Celsius scale 100 is equals to so the temperature F minus so the ice point 32 by the number of divisions 130 done clear so then we get C by 100 is equals to F minus 32 by 180 so here C is nothing but X by so this is I can write here so 2 ones are uh, 2 fives are 2 nines are so X by 5 is equals to X minus 32 by 9 so let's cross multiply so 9x is equals to 5x minus so 160 32 into 5 is 160 so let's bring this to this side so 9x minus 5x 4x is equals to minus 140 so then X is equals to minus 40 degree centigrade so minus for not centigrade so minus 40 at what temperature so that's x is equal to minus 40 degrees so they both will be equal option one understood the procedure now everyone clear the concept Chan. so let's move further so we have got one more question so let's try this question on your own now so what's the question says on a new scale of temperature which is linear called the W scale 
so the freezing and boiling points of uh, water are 39 degrees w and uh, 239 degrees w respectively so what will be the temperature on the new scale corresponding to a temperature on the 39 degrees on the celsius scale so same concept so there are two scales this is a unknown scale or the w scale why to name it unknown so we they already gave it's a w scale so let's consider this is a w scale so whose freezing point is given so 39 degrees w and then so this is 239 degrees w right fine now so we have the other scale which is a celsius scale so celsius scale so where uh, so this is 0 degree centigrade this is 100 degree centigrade fine so now some temperature on the some temperature on the celsius what is the temperature 39 degrees on centigrade scale is equals to how much temperature on the w scale so let's say some temperature on w scale that let it be x is equals to 39 degrees on the celsius scale so then apply the concept now what's the concept that we can proceed for so x minus 39 so some temperature minus the freezing point by so what are the number of divisions 239 minus 39 so 200 is the number of divisions right so which is equals to here also so what we can write here so 39 minus 0 so 39 minus 0 by so how many divisions on the celsius scale 100 divisions on the celsius scale so done so then i can write x minus 39 by 200 is equals to 39 by 200 uh, 100 so 100 ones are 100 two times so x minus 39 is equals to so 2 if you send to it to that side so 78 so then x is equals to 78 plus 39 so which is 100 plus uh, 17 so which is 117 so which is nothing but 117 degrees w on a w scale is equals to 39 degrees centigrade on the celsius scale clear option 4 is the correct one guys done everyone clear the, clear with the concept Chal. so let's go further so then what is the change in celsius and change in kelvin see sorry the change in temperature so the change in uh, degree celsius is equal to change in kelvin so here the celsius scale has the celsius scale has 100 divisions yes and then so kelvin scale also has 100 divisions so the kelvin scale also has 100 divisions hundred divisions yes so now see so one degree centigrade on the celsius scale corresponds to one kelvin on the kelvin scale can we say that so that means so the change in centigrade scale is equals to so the change in kelvin yes or no because there are same number of divisions so here one degree centigrade if it changes so there one kelvin changes the same the change in temperature the change in degree celsius is equals to change in kelvin so delta c is equals to delta k so now what about this fahrenheit one so we know the relation between celsius and uh, fahrenheit so what's the relation that we have studied so that is c by phi is equals to f minus 32 by 9 right Chal. so now so here the change in temperature we required so that's why i'm writing so let's say so the change in centigrade is equals to so phi into so f minus 32 by 9 so let's write this as delta c is equals to phi by 9 into so f minus 32 is nothing but so the delta f f minus 32 is nothing but the delta f right so this is a relation between centigrade kelvin and centigrade and fahrenheit you can also write between so the kelvin and fahrenheit because in place of delta c you can also substitute delta k both are same right delta c is equal to delta k done clear 
so done this part also so next so we got the question so let's try this question on your own so what's the question says a celsius and a fahrenheit thermometer are dipped in boiling water so boiling water means whose temperature 100 degree centigrade yes so the water temperature is lowered until the fahrenheit thermometer registers 140 degrees fahrenheit so then what is the fall in temperature as registered by the centigrade thermometer so here they are talking about the centigrade and fahrenheit thermometers okay Chal. so let's uh, what's the change in temperature in the centigrade is equals to 5 by 90 of the change in fahrenheit yes so we need so what is the fall in temperature as registered by the centigrade thermometer the fall in temperature means the change in temperature so delta c we required so what is the fall in uh, this one uh, fahrenheit so the temperature the water temperature is lowered until the fahrenheit thermometer registers 140 so from where it registered 140 from where it registered 140 it lowered to 140 so now what we should take here delta f you know the delta f you can easily find what is delta c so find the delta f now find the delta f simple concept simple concept so find the delta f that's it see shall i say that the delta f is equals to 5 by 9 into so it is lowered from 212 what is the boiling point see in the centigrade scale the boiling point is 100 degree centigrade so in the fahrenheit scale what is the boiling point 212 from 212 it has fallen to 140 degrees from 212 fahrenheit to 140 fahrenheit so what is the fall 212 minus 140 212 minus 140 yes or no so which is nothing but 72 so here the delta f is 72 that's it so the delta f is 72 so substitute here so 9 ones are 9 eights are so then 5 into 8 40 degrees centigrade is a change in temperature 40 degrees centigrade is a change in temperature in the centigrade scale done guys clear everyone sure simple concept so now let's go for the thermal expansion so so this is all about your temperature scales so any temperature scale they might give so they can give any temperature scale so just the concept is same whatever we discussed so th that concept only you have to apply okay guys sure so now let's go for the next concept that is the thermal expansion in solids see the thermal expansion is nothing but so applying the temperature or heating a body so whenever we heat a body whenever we heat a body on heating so the temperature increases on heating so the temperature of any solid increase increases the temperature of so solid conductor so increases yes so as a result so the thermal expansion takes place in it so it the body expands on heating so that expansion is called the thermal expansion thermal expansion so this thermal expansion can be of three types so here we are going to discuss so the first one the linear thermal expansion so where the one dimensional bodies like uniform rod of some length l or a wire of some length l so when it is heated so it is elongated by some length delta l okay so that's called the, li the linear thermal expansion and we are also going to discuss about the aerial thermal expansion aerial thermal expansion done and then so next we have volume thermal expansion so we have volume thermal expansion done guys clear so these are the 
थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एक्सपेंशन दट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस चलो सो हियर वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट आई हैव नोटेड यर सो लेट सी सो द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन एनी टू पॉइंट ऑन ए सॉलिड इंक्रीजेस विथ इंक्रीज इन टेम्परेचर सो लेट सपोज कंसिडर दिस इज द सॉलिड इनिशियली सो देर आर टू पॉइंट ए एंड बी सो नो अपॉन हीटिंग अपॉन हीटिंग सो द सेम सॉलिड विल एक्सपैंड दिस वे एंड देन द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन लेट सपोज ए एंड बी इज एक्स सो हियर द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन ए एंड बी विल बिकम सम वाई सो वेर सो द वाई विल बी ग्रेटर दैन एक्स सो वेर द वाई विल बी ग्रेटर दैन एक्स क्लियर डन चल नेक्स्ट so let's move to the next question two holes of unequal diameters so the diameters are not equal so d1 and d2 are cut in metal sheet so consider this is a metal sheet in metal sheet so there are two holes made so one is of the diameter d1 the another one is of the diameter d2 so then so if the sheet is heated if the sheet is heated what happens so this d1 expands this d2 expands so both d1 and d2 decreases no upon heating so it expands right so uh, both d1 and d2 will increase yes they both increase d1 will increase d2 will decrease no so d1 will decrease d2 will increase no so both will increase direct question option 2 is the correct one done acha so let's see the next question number 6 A solid ball of metal has concentric spherical cavity within it. So, if the ball is heated, the volume of the cavity. See here. So, this is this is a ball. So now, a cavity is made here in it. So, this is a cavity. So, upon heating, so what happens? So, the cavity increases upon heating. so the cavity increases so this will increase from here to here so the volume of cavity obviously will increase and the area of cavity also will increase so the volume increases and area they both increase so if they ask instead of volume if they ask about the area also you should mention the same increases clear done so now let's go for the linear expansion so in uniform rods of length l and mass m so here i am considering a uniform rod of length l not initial length is l not so now it is heated so there is some change in temperature it is at the room temperature initially now we are heating so that's why there is a some change in temperature so now this solid has expanded by so some length which is delta l is a change in length so now what i am doing is let's say let's write so the change in length whatever the change in length it is observed that it's directly proportional to its original length the change in length whatever the change in length it is directly proportional to the original length of the rod and it is directly proportional to the change in temperature it is directly proportional to the change in temperature so let it be equation number 1 let it be equation number 2 so from here i can write so the delta l is directly proportional to so l not into delta t so from here so the delta l is equals to take out the proportional symbol and put the proportional constant as alpha see this is proportional symbol here these three are proportional this is alpha guys so i'll write somewhat thick so don't get confused so take out the proportional symbol and put the proportional constant that is alpha so delta l is equals to l not into alpha delta t clear so chal so here this is a change in temperature let's suppose so the final temperature has become the sorry the final length has become some length l okay so the final length l is equals to l not plus delta l l not is the original length and after expanding so the delta l is a change in length so now the final length will be so original length 
plus the change in length. Done. Shall. So L is equals to L naught plus so delta L. What is the delta L? L naught alpha delta t. L naught alpha delta t. Right. So here L is equals to yes or no? In place of delta L, I am writing this one. That's it. So you can take L naught common in these both. So you can write one plus alpha delta t. So this is a final length. So here, what is alpha, sir? What is alpha? So this alpha is called the coefficient of linear expansion. It's a coefficient of linear expansion. Alpha is a coefficient of linear expansion. And what is the units? What are the units of this alpha? So k to the power minus 1 r so degrees centigrade minus 1 so that means per degree kelvin or per degree centigrade so they are the units of the alpha done guys so if you want you can write the units from here so here l units l units gets cancelled delta t if it goes that side so 1 by delta t so 1 by delta t means 1 by degree centigrade or 1 by kelvin so these are the units clear everyone shall so good so this is the change in length is this one this is the change in length upon heating and this is the final length this is the final length done clear sure good let's move further so now let's write the graph of l versus delta t so l is a final length after heating so we wrote like so l is equals to so the final length is equals to so the original length plus the change in length s then so the final length is equals to so the original length plus what is the change in length so l naught alpha delta t l naught alpha delta t so from here so i can write l is equals to let's uh, reverse the terms l naught alpha delta t plus l naught chalo so i need the graph l versus delta t yes so l versus delta t so let's consider this is y and this is x l y versus x graph we required so this whole part will become so the slope m and this is x so y is equals to mx plus c is a straight line with slope m and the intercept c with the intercept c yes or no so it's a positive intercept and the slope is also positive so then how do we draw the graph now so let's draw the graph so now we need the l versus delta t y versus x l versus delta t so it's a straight line graph the graph is a straight line having so the slope so the slope tan theta is equals to so what's the slope l naught alpha the slope is l naught alpha and the positive intercept so which is l naught this is a positive intercept c which is l naught so this is a graph of l versus delta t so the final length versus the change in temperature done clear Chal. good so this is also done so let's move further so we got one question here so let's try this question on your own everyone so the length of a steel rod is 5 centimeters longer than that of the brass rod so if the difference in their lengths is to remain same at all temperatures so then the length of the brass rod will be so the coefficient of linear expansion for the steel and brass are given so first what's the given information let's write so the length of the steel rod is 5 centimeters uh, longer than the brass rod so that means length of the steel rod is 5 centimeters longer than the brass rod yes so we can write so the ls minus lb is equals to some 5 centimeters so let it be 
and then the coefficient of linear expansions are given so alpha for the steel is given and alpha for the brass is given for, for steel it is 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 and uh, for brass it is 18 into 10 to the power minus 6 per degree centigrade done so now the thing is so catch the hint so if this difference in their length is to remain same at all temperature so even if you change the temperature so the difference in their length is going to be same at all temperature so what does that mean so the change in their length is going to be same with respect to the temperature yes or no so upon heating or else i'll explain you with the example for example so let's say so initially so the length of the brass rod is some 10 centimeters okay and length of the steel rod will become 15 centimeters so at what temperature so let's suppose at the room temperature at the room temperature so then the temperatures increased so we increase the temperature to some 35 degree centigrade so let's suppose so it is raised to some 15 degree 15 centimeters so then it has become 20 centimeter then i raised the temperature to 40 degree centigrade so it has become 20 centimeters so this has become 25 centimeters so that means with respect to the temperature change so the change in their length is going to be same here 5 centimeter here 5 centimeter here 5 centimeter so which means if the difference in their length is to remain same at all the temperatures so i can write here so i can write so the delta l of steel is equals to the delta l of brass the delta l of steel is equals to the delta l of brass that's it done so if you can catch this hint so you can solve the question easily now so what is the delta l of steel what is delta l formula actually so the delta l is equals to the original length into alpha into delta t done so what is alpha uh, length of the steel original length of the steel into alpha of the steel let the temperature change be delta t which is equals to so original length of the brass let it be lb so alpha of brass into the delta t right so the delta t delta t gets cancelled so we can write so ls alpha s is equals to lb alpha b done so chal. so now i can write here so what are the values that we know so we already know that ls minus lb is equals to 5 so from here ls is equals to lb into 5 ls is equals to lb into 5 you can write so substitute the values so because we need the length of the brass rod right we need so then the length of the brass rod will be yeah so if you need the or else let's take that equation what's that equation ls minus lb is equals to 5 5 centimeters so from here so in place of ls so what we can write lb alpha b by alpha s is equal uh, minus lb is equals to 5 shall we write so in place of ls i am writing lb alpha b by alpha s right so shall so then i can write here so lb alpha b so minus lb into alpha s is equals to phi into alpha s so then simply we know everything so just substitute the values here so i'll subtract this one uh, i'll so you can take lb common so then alpha b minus alpha s is equals to phi into alpha s that's it so we need the lb so what is alpha b minus alpha s alpha b is 18 alpha s is 12 yes or no so 18 minus 12 so both are 10 to the power minus 6 uh, so 18 minus 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 so which is equals to 5 into so what is alpha s so 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 so either side 10 to the power minus 6 gets cancelled so this is lb so 18 minus 12 6 so this is 60 so then lb the length of the brass rod is equals to 60 by 6 which is 10 centimeters so they asked us for the length of the brass rod only right so which is 
टेन सेंटीमीटर ऑप्शन फोर इज द करेक्ट वन डन गाइज सो इफ दे आस्क यू वॉट इज देंथ ऑफ द स्टील रॉड सो इट इज प्लस फाइव सो विच इज फिफ्टीन सेंटीमीटर सो यू कैन राइट दट ऑल्सो सो द लेंथ ऑफ द स्टील रॉड विल बिकम फिफ्टीन सेंटीमीटर सो दिस डिफरेंस इज गोइंग टू बी सेम एट ऑल द टेम्परेचर्स सो नो इनिशियली दे आर टेन सेंटीमीटर्स फिफ्टीन सेंटीमीटर्स सो इफ द टेम्परेचर हैज इंक्रीज सो दिस माइट बिकम ट्वेंटी सो दिस विल बिकम ट्वेंटी फाइव फॉर श्योर दैट्स वॉट दे मैंशन इट इन द क्वेश्चन ओके डन अच्छा सो द नेक्स्ट वी हैव वन मोर क्वेश्चन हियर सो द क्वेश्चन ऑफ लीनियर एक्सपेंशन ऑफ ब्रॉस एंड स्टील रॉड्स आर आल्फा वन एंड आल्फा टू सो फॉर द ब्रॉस एंड स्टील सो द लेंथ ऑफ ब्रॉस एंड स्टील आर एल वन एंड एल टू रेस्पेक्टिवली इफ एल टू माइनस एल वन इज मेंटेन सेम एट ऑल द टेम्परेचर सी हियर हियर इज अंट सो द एल वन माइनस एल टू इज मेंटेन एट ऑल द टेम्परेचर सो दैट मीन्स द चेंज इन देयर लेंथ इज गोइंग टू बी सेम सो वॉट दे सेट द चेंज इन द लेंथ ऑफ ब्रॉस at all temperatures is equals to the change in the length of steel at all temperatures right done so now what is the change in the length of the brass so sorry we can write so the length of the brass into alpha of the brass let the temperature change be delta t so the length of the steel into alpha of the steel into the temperature whatever the temperature that you are increasing here so the same temperature you are increasing for the steel rod so delta t delta t gets cancelled so here the length of the brass rod so they mentioned l1 in the question and alpha of the brass alpha 1 is equals to length of the steel rod l2 alpha is alpha 2 for the steel so l alpha 1 l1 or l1 alpha 1 is equals to l2 alpha 2 so squares are not there alpha 1 l1 is equals to alpha 2 l2 option 2 is the correct one and then so this is not so this is not done so standard result same previous question so their values are given in this question there are no values that's it done chal good so we have got one more question so let's try this question on your own everyone a copper rod of 88 cm and an aluminum rod of unknown length have their increase in length is independent of the increase in temperature see here again so the hint is here so the increase in length is independent of their increase in temperature so that means at all the temperatures so the change in length is same the change in length the increase in length is independent of increase in temperature so i can write there are two rods so the delta l of copper is equals to so the delta l of aluminum that's it if you can catch this hint you can solve the question easily so now i can write the original length of the copper into alpha of the copper into the change in temperature delta t is equals to so the l of aluminum into so the alpha of aluminum into the delta t so here delta t delta t gets cancelled so then so what is the length of the copper rod so 88 cm let it be in centimeters only because the aluminum rod values also given in centimeters so 88 into so what is alpha of copper here it is given so 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 5 is equals to so length of aluminum we have to calculate into so what is alpha of aluminum 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 5 so 10 to the power minus 5 10 to the power minus 5 gets cancelled so i can write here uh, so it is so one time so this goes 44 times yes or no no sorry so let's do one thing so let, let's multiply so on either side with 10 so consider this as 17 this as so 1 4 so 4 into 17 into 10 so shall i write like this 1.7 into 10 is nothing but sorry 17 into 10 to the power minus 1 or else let's write the step way to mess up so let's write the step again see here so the length of the copper so which is 88 cm so let it be alpha of copper so which is 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 5 so i am writing it as 17 into 10 to the power minus 6 uh, so this is the easier method so then aluminum length we have to calculate into so what is alpha of the 
L. So 22 into 10 to the power minus 6. So 10 to the power minus 6, 10 to the power minus 6 cancel. So 4 ones are, 22 ones are, 22 fours are. So then length of aluminium is equals to, so I can write here 17 into 4, so which is 68 centimeters. So the correct option is 68 centimeters. Option 2 is the correct one. Done, guys. Everyone clear? Chal. So then we have one more question. So what's the question says? If two rods of length L and 2L having coefficient of linear expansion alpha uh, and 2 alpha respectively are connected end to end. So the average coefficient of linear expansion of the composite rod equals 2. So this question you can solve it by the shortcut. Direct formula will be there. And you can also solve it by the procedure. First, let's go for the procedure. Then I'll give the shortcut formula. So there are two rods. So one is of length L and the other one is of length 2L. So this is of length L and this is of length 2L. Fine. So then, so combinedly, so we have got the total, total length like this. Yes, fine. So this is the length L and this is the length 2L. So if they are connected end to end, so the total length of this will become 3L. The total length of this become 3L. So now, so its coefficient of linear expansion alpha and its coefficient of linear expansion 2 alpha and then so let its equivalent coefficient of linear expansion alpha E then. So now, so if they have to be, see here, if they have to be connected, two solids have to be connected, they must be heated, right? Yes or no? So they must be heated. So here, what is the delta L? What is the change in length? The change in length in the first one plus, so the change in the length in the second one is equals to the change in length in the whole combination. Shall I write this equation? So whatever the change in length in the first one and the change in length will be the second one. So combinedly these two will be the total change in the composite rod. Yes or no? So that's the extra length. So then done. So the question, so what's the first one? So the delta L1 for this is equals to, so its original length is L. So coefficient of linear expansion alpha. So let the temperature delta T. And then here also, so delta L2 will become so the original length 2L and then coefficient of linear expansion 2 alpha into the delta T done Chalo. so here the total delta equivalent so the total length delta sorry 3L into so the coefficient of linear expansion alpha E the temperature delta T so done so substitute the values so L alpha delta T plus here so 2L into 2 alpha into delta T is equals to so 3L into alpha E into delta T. So I can cancel delta T, delta T, delta T. So the temperature difference is going to be same. Then so I have got alpha L alpha plus this is 4 L alpha 2 into 2 4 L alpha is equals to so 3L alpha E. So this is 5 L alpha is equals to 3 L alpha E. So L L also gets cancelled. So now I can can now I can write. So we need actually alpha E, right? So what is the average coefficient of linear expansion of the composite rod? So alpha E is equals to so 5 by 3 alpha. Alpha E is equals to 5 by 3 alpha. So which is option 3 is the correct one. So this is a procedure. So now you can also go for the con, uh, shortcut. The shortcut is if there are two rods. So let's suppose this is of the length L1 and then the coefficient of linear expansion alpha 1 and the second rod which is of some length L2. So then coefficient of linear expansion alpha 2. So now they two, those two are joined end to end. So then the total length will become L1 plus L2 and the 
coefficient of linear expansion becomes alpha e done chalo so now we can write the uh, direct formula for alpha e the coefficient of linear expansion the average coefficient of linear expansion as l1 alpha 1 plus l2 alpha 2 by l1 plus l2 so l1 alpha 1 plus l2 alpha 2 by l1 plus l2 so clear everyone done Chal. so this is a concept you should remember so for the previous question if you want you can check for the previous question previous question alpha e is equals to so the first one is of the length l right so l and the alpha plus the second one uh, 2l is the length 2 alpha is the coefficient of linear expansion so 2l 2 alpha by the total length l1 plus l2 which is l plus 2l right so this is l alpha plus so 4l alpha by 3l so which is 5l alpha by 3l so l l cancel so which is 5 by 3 alpha so 5 by 3 alpha same answer we got so either you can go for the procedure or the shortcut your wish done guys clear Chal. so then we have the bimetallic strip so bimetallic strip is a material in which so there will be two different materials are there so it's a composite rod we can say so the bimetallic strip is a composite rod so which is made up of two materials so whose coefficient of linear uh, expansions are different so let's suppose its coefficient of linear expansion alpha 1 its coefficient of linear expansion alpha 2 but their length should be same their length should be same and they both pivoted at the same point they both pivoted at the ends together here they are pivoted okay chill so now when you heat this one when we heat this one so the coefficient of linear expansion so the solids will expand right these are the two solids they expand so how they expand let's say here consider alpha 2 is greater than alpha 1 so this one will, will expand more alpha 2 is greater than alpha 1 so that the top one will expand more and the bottom one will expand less so like this they expand so this is theta so let this be radius r so you can you know, already know that so this is a length l the arc length l if you consider l is equals to r theta so for whichever the one so the r is more so the theta will be more so if the r is more so here the theta will be more we can say done in this case clear guys done this part Chal. so actually we what are the condition first the for the bimetallic strip so the length should be same and then so their coefficient of linear expansion should be different so and then one more thing so they are pivoted they must be pivoted at one end they are pivoted at ends together done so now so what's the use of this sir see so generally it is used in the fire alarms so whenever so the fire catches so this uh, material whatever the device is there fire, ar fire alarm device so in that there will be two materials which are of different coefficient of linear expansions and they are straight like this so then when the fire catches what happens so the heat increases so then they bend so when they bend the alarm rings clear so that's a concept of the bimetallic strip okay sure. so two metal strips that constitute a bimetallic strip must necessarily differ in their length no their length should be same so if their length are same so their masses also will be same so they are uniform rods e of equal thickness and of equal length and then so the coefficient of linear expansion as yes, they differ in their coefficient of linear expansion resistivity so resistivity no resistivity will be same done clear guys sure 
so now the time period of the pendulum first understand the concept here so we know that so this is a simple pendulum so this is the length of l string l and the mass of the bob m so now the time period of this pendulum is 2 pi into root over l by g the time period is equals to 2 pi into root over l by g so if you observe the time period is directly proportional to root over length of the string s so now so what happens is this string especially in the case of uh, watches like uh, wall clocks will be there now so in that you can observe this uh, wall clock where the pendulum will be moved right and left side right so that is made up of the material uh, that is made up of any metal or solid conductor so when the temperature increases what happens if it is made up of the material so a material in the sense not a thread it's a metal if it is made up of a metal so then it's when the temperature increases its length increases its length increases as a result so the time period increases if the length increases so the time period increases so the time period increases so which means so time gain or time loss takes place see imagine let's suppose in one minute it has to uh, oscillate 60 times so for one seconds one time it oscillates let's suppose now if the temperature increases the length increases so its length increases so the time period increases so in one minute so it's oscillating more number or less number of times so that means we are losing the time that means we are losing the time yes or no so the time loss takes place so time loss because in one minute let's suppose it has to take 60 oscillations if its length increases in one minute it will oscillate less than 60 to oscillate 60 say 60 times so it will take more than one minute that means the time loss is taking place here yes or no so and then so if the temperature is less if the temperature is decreased so then the length decreases of the metal and then so the time period also decreases the time period also decreases so then what is here the time gain takes place so how time gain sir because let's suppose if length is in, uh, decreased so then in one minute it has to oscillate 60 seconds so now if its length decreases so it will oscillate more number of times in one minute it oscillates more than 60 seconds 60 times so then time gain takes place understood guys clear sure so here what is that the change in time or the time period of that pendulum so we can write so the t delta t the change in time sorry so the change in time delta t is equals to so t half t alpha delta t this is a change in time period the delta t is a direct formula you can remember so the change in time period and then so the t is a original time period this is a original time period and then so this uh, alpha is a coefficient of linear expansion of that metal so the coefficient of linear expansion and then so the delta t theta is a change in temperature the delta theta is a change in temperature so here already we have t that's why i'm taking theta as a temperature change then guys clear everyone this question so this, so this concept sure so let's try to solve this question on your own so what's the question says a second pendulum clock has a steel wire see here it is made up of a metal wire a second pendulum 
so the clock shows correct time at 25 degree centigrade how much time does the clock lose or gain in one week so when the temperature so when the temperature is increased to 35 degrees centigrade so it shows correct time at the 25 degrees centigrade and then so at 35 degrees centigrade increase to the 35 degrees centigrade so what is the time uh, loss or time gain first thing is temperature increased so if the temperature increase the length increases so the time period increases and then the time loss takes place the first of all the time loss takes place that's the first concept and how much time has lost so that's a concept so the first to find what is the change in time period find what is the change in time period quick sorry quickly see mm, here you can write one more formula so the time loss or time gain you can write here the time loss or gain is equals to which we can write delta t is equals to so delta t by t into in the given time so just write this formula we'll solve this question so that you'll understand better write down this formula Chal. so let's come to this question so they are asking what is the change in time loss or time gain so first thing is time loss takes place so how much time loss the time loss so which is delta t is equals to delta t by t into delta t by t into so in the given time so what is the delta t so we already know for the delta t formula half t alpha delta t half t alpha delta theta by t into the given time so the original time period original time period cancel half into what is alpha of the steel so 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 5 right so into so then here we have got uh, alpha is done so theta delta theta so which is 10 degree centigrade delta theta is 10 degree 25 to 35 right and then so in the what time in one week they are saying in one week means it's a second pendulum so convert it to seconds so one week means seven days so for each day 24 hours and for each hour 20 60 minutes for each minute 60 seconds so that's it you do this calculation so you'll get the answer so this is the the time loss first of all what happens the time loss takes place because the temperature increased if the temperature decreased so then the time gain takes place so if you calculate you will get approximately some 36.28 seconds so you can do the calculation option 4 is the correct one for this clear understood everyone done Chal. now the thermal stress or thermal strain so let's go for this concept here we have the thermal stress and thermal strain so it is a metal which is of length l or the rod which is of length l and the coefficient of linear expansion alpha so it is pivoted at both the ends so length l and alpha a length l and coefficient of linear expansion alpha so whenever there is a increase in temperature so then what happens its length increases so we know that so the change in length delta l is equals to l alpha delta t the change in length is equals to in this the change in length in this is equals to l delta l alpha delta t so here delta l by l so this is called what is delta l by l so have you studied this one what is delta l by l i brought this l to this side so this is nothing but strain so the length has changed due to heating right so that's why this strain is called the thermal strain this strain is called the thermal strain 
that's it okay and one more thing so we know that the stress by strain is equals to angst modulus the stress upon strain is equals to so the angst modulus right so from here so the stress here is equals to so angst modulus into the strain into the strain so i can also write so the stress is equals to so angst modulus into so here the strain which is caused due to the temperature change so that's why i'm considering the uh, thermal strain so what is the thermal strain so delta l by l so then the stress which is equals to in place of this delta l by l i can write alpha delta t alpha delta t so this stress is called the thermal stress this is called the thermal stress that's it so thermal strain and thermal stress so that's what the heading right so or uh, you can also write this stress as the force per unit area so in place of stress you can write force per unit area which is equals to gamma into so gamma means the angst modulus here angst modulus into alpha delta t so from here so the force applied on both the ends what's the force due to the heating is equals to gamma a or the y a into alpha delta t so this also you can write done clear chalo so this is the concept so we have got one more question when a rod is heated but prevented from expanding so the stress developed is independent of so what's the stress formula we have got see when it is heated when it is heated what where they said when a rod is rod is heated yes so heated means whatever the stress developed is called the thermal stress the stress developed is called the thermal stress so what's the thermal stress formula so we can write the angst modulus into the thermal strain so delta l by l l so what is thermal strain so alpha delta t so here the thermal stress it is depending on the angst modulus that angst modulus is a property of material right so thermal stress depending on the material of the rod so it is independent of they said so it's depending on the material because it's depending on the angst modulus so it also depending on the rise in temperature it is also depending on the rise in temperature so it is depending on the length of the rod is there any length term in the thermal stress formula is there any length term no right so there is no there is no length term so it is independent of the length clear it is independent of the length of the rod so that's what you have to understand here chal next so we got one question so question number 14 try to understand the given question guys first so hope you guys are understanding the concept i am going fast because uh, the syllabus has to be covered right uh, so hope you guys are following just uh, first whenever the question is given try to read the question on your own and then solve okay so if you are not getting then go for the solutions here chal so there are two rods of different materials having coefficients of thermal expansion alpha 1 and alpha 2 and angst modulus y1 y2 so here coefficient of linear expansion alpha 1 alpha 2 and uh, angst modulus y1 and y2 respectively so are fixed between two rigid massive walls fine so the rods are heated such that they undergo same increase in temperature so the delta t is same in both the cases so there is no bending of the rod so there is no bending of the rod and alpha 1 by alpha 2 ratio is given alpha 1 by alpha 2 ratio is given 2 by 3 so then the thermal stresses developed in the two rods will be e developed in the two rods are equal so provided y1 y2 is equals to so they said thermal stress in both of them are equal so thermal stress what is the thermal stress formula gamma sorry y alpha delta t so i can write so the thermal stress of one i'll write this way so the thermal 
stress of rod 1 is equals to the thermal stress of rod 2. Right? So then, so here I can write the first one. So what's the thermal stress formula? So Y1, alpha 1. So the temperature is same. See here. So the rods are heated such that they undergo the same increase in temperature. So the delta T in both of them are same. So which is equals to. So the thermal stress in the second one, Y2, alpha 2, delta T. So delta T, delta T cancel. So they are asking Y1 by Y2. So here Y1 by Y2 will be equals to alpha 2 by alpha 1. I have sent it to this side. So what is alpha 2 by alpha 1? 3 by 2. So which is nothing but y1 is to y2 is 3 is to 2 option 3 is a question see the question seems very big but the concept is very easy just you have to catch this hint where is that so the thermal stress developed in the two rods are equal so if the thermal stress are equal we know the thermal stress formula and equate them and here one more hint is given the same increase in temperature so delta t is same done so now the next the superficial or aerial expansion so till now whatever that we have seen is the linear expansion so which takes place in the one dimensional bodies right so now we are going for the superficial or aerial expansion so this is for the 2d objects so this is for 2d objects okay so the same thing so when there is a rod if you heat it what happens so the change in length takes place and consider if you have a two dimensional body which has some area A0 initially some area A0 so then upon heating so its whole area changes to some A now there is the change in area delta A is the change in area okay so that change in area delta A is directly proportional to the original area the delta A is directly proportional to original area and the change in area is also proportional to so the change in temperature so you are heating it so the change in temperature delta t so from here so the delta a is directly proportional to a naught and then so it is also directly proportional to delta t i can write this equation now so take out the proportional symbol and put the proportional constant here delta a is equals to so a naught beta t beta into delta t so this is a change in temperature so now what is the final area will become so the final area a will be equals to so the original area a naught plus the change in area delta a so which we can write a naught is the original area plus so what is delta a simply a naught beta delta t so a naught beta delta t so here a naught i am taking out so then 1 plus beta delta t 1 plus beta delta t so that's it so this is a final area so what is beta sir here so the beta is a coefficient of aerial expansion or superficial expansion so it's a coefficient of it's a coefficient of aerial expansion or superficial expansion so what are the units so what are the units area units area units gets cancelled beta is equal to 1 by delta t so the same units so units are either per degree kelvin or kelvin inverse or degree centigrade inverse done clear chill good so now we have volume or cubical expansion in the case of 3D objects. So in the case of 3D objects, the volume expansion takes place. So linear objects, uh, linear expansion takes place. So 2D objects, aerial expansion takes place. 3D objects, volume expansion takes place. So let the original volume V0 and then upon heating, so the temperature increases, so the volume has changed to v so now there is a change in volume delta v which is directly proportional to the original volume v naught and the change in volume is directly proportional to the change in temperature delta t okay 
so from here so the delta v is equals to the delta v is directly proportional to v not delta t so then delta v is equals to take out the proportional symbol and put the proportional constant as gamma see Young's modulus use y and here you use gamma okay so gamma into delta t so this is a change in volume so what is this gamma is called sir so it's a coefficient of volume expansion it's a coefficient of volume expansion done shallow so next so what is the final volume sir the final volume v is equals to the original volume plus the change in volume so the final volume is equals to the original volume v naught plus what is the change in volume so v naught gamma delta t done so v is equals to v naught into so 1 plus gamma delta t that's it so here the units of this are also same so what are the units so v delta v and v naught will have the same units they get cancelled and uh, gamma is equals to 1 by delta t so the units will be the units will be kelvin inverse or degree centigrade inverse that's it done clear Chal. so then what is the relation between alpha sorry here it is given wrong so what is the relation between alpha beta gamma let's write what is the relation between alpha beta and gamma so here alpha is a coefficient of linear expansion beta is a coefficient of aerial expansion and gamma is a coefficient of volume expansion they all have the same units so you can write alpha is equals to 2 beta which is equals to 3 gamma so remember this relation so where beta is equals to alpha by 2 we can write and gamma is equals to alpha by 3 you can write so beta this is a relation between alpha beta gamma alpha is equals to 2 beta which is equals to 3 gamma done guys clear this part everyone so see the next one here we have sorry so alpha beta gamma relation we need alpha beta gamma the relation between alpha beta and gamma see so the beta is equals to 2 alpha and then gamma is equals to 3 alpha okay so you can write the relation alpha is equals to so which is beta by 2 which is equals to gamma by 3 so this is a co relation between three coefficients of expansion linear exp coefficient of linear expansion coefficient of aerial expansion and coefficient of volume expansion so they all have the same units so what are they so kelvin inverse or centigrade inverse then so direct question can be picked from here okay guys Chalo. so that's it from my end for the today's session so in the next session we'll start the calorimetry topic so which is very important and the questions can be given directly from whatever we are going to discuss in tomorrow's class okay Chalo. so let's meet in the next class till then keep studying all the very best bye